All right, Craig, so one of the most important elements or characteristics of a good impact position or when we're getting and striking that ball first, the ground second, low point after getting a nice little divot like that mm. is really all about kind of the pressure of this back trigger figure here mm -hmm. on the back of the shaft and the feeling that that creates and squeezing that ball between the turf, right? Mm -hmm. And we see the average amateur recreational golfer's position, they'll get themselves into this orientation here mm -hmm. where the hands will be back, the hips might be back, adding loft, and really I can't feel any pressure on the backside of that grip. And we were talking before about when you look at the majority of tour players, there are a lot of commonalities between their impact position. There might be subtleties and difference, but how they apply force on the back of the shaft at the moment of impact is certainly one of those commonalities, right? Yes. yes. And we've got a great training aid here that we're going to use to kind of help us give the feeling, but then also talk about face control as well. So mm -hmm. why don't you run us through it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you're talking about there in pressuring, it's, it's about that intention, right? And so I think we have an intention as better players to, to kind of throw the energy down through, compress the ball, compress the turf. And we know, in, at least in my mind, I'm using my right hand because I would throw a ball this way, skip a rock this way. So I'm going to use that trigger finger to do that. So to me, the intention behind it creates those forces, right? So with the saber that I created, I created it in a square shape with a blue stripe on top and then three like carbon fiber sides. Yep. So when somebody's using it, it really works well for them to be able to hook that trigger finger and pressure yeah. that flat side of the grip. So when somebody's working with the saber, whether they go up and their left wrist is neutral or bowed, it doesn't really matter. As long as when they come back down, their intention is to pressure that flat side back into impact this way. Mm. And you'll see all of that, you know, the best players kind of hitting and that wrist kind of flexing and then compressing the ball and on the way out. So yeah. the square shape was a must. I've used a ruler before. I've used uh, even holding the, the other side of the club, you know, holding the face this way and releasing it that way so you know where the face is the flat side of the saber was really helpful for that. Yeah, that's, and that's that's really interesting. It's the first time I've actually seen the square grip component mm -hmm. of it, mainly because when you do use a round grip, being coaches, we are aware of that's a thing. And yes, when we're playing golf, we might be aware of the position of that index finger there mm. up against the back of the shaft and the benefits of ensuring we are applying pressure on the back of the ball. But yeah. for a lot of recreational golfers, they've just never felt that, right? And now bringing awareness to that if they were to, and I'll grab that off you, yep. place that into their hands, it just fits perfectly up against that little yeah. pad there, doesn't it? And mm -hmm. I think that's a, that's a key mm -hmm. with when I'm setting up here of exactly yeah. how that feels automatically straight off, right? Yeah. So and the biggest thing that I see is people pressure their thumbs. A lot of times they'll they'll put the right thumb on top. Maybe they won't have a space, or even if they do have a space. They're not pushing with that finger, they're pushing with the thumb. So then I think that's what creates a lot of that. So they'll get to the top of their swing here, and then their intention is to push off the thumb, mm -hmm. which then gets them into that like throw down scoop type position because they've pushed the thumb into position, they haven't skipped the rock or thrown it sideways. Yeah, and I would say this is not even just a benefit at impact, but in address as well, when you get your index finger in such a position up against that, that actually helps facilitate hinge earlier in the backswing where there's a lot of players, we don't see mm. that happen. And mm -hmm. then it leads to a breakdown of the structure of the arm. So mm. the movement of just having that kind of flat side on the, the, the index on the flat side there, mm -hmm. just really enables that wrist to work in a condition that you would see with the professional. Yeah. And just touching on the pressure points in regards to the thumbs. Mm -hmm. Well, that's one of those technicalities as a coach we know is very important, but simplifying that for players at home, it's if you were to hold a golf club and just put all your pressure on your thumbs like this and take your other fingers off, that golf club feels incredibly heavy mm -hmm. and I actually can't move it or create any hinge. Mm -hmm. With the left hand, the most important pressure points is the secure hold underneath that uh, pinky little finger there and the, the pad. Mm -hmm. with the Which right, again, with the square shape, feel it. You, you, you lock, it locks in there. It does, mm -hmm. it does. And then the right hand as this fits on is really the majority of the force is the palm up against the thumb mm -hmm. and then the index finger up against the back of the shaft, mm -hmm. which then helps the hinge, facilitates this width that we see with the best players. And then as we come back down into impact, really like that there, I can feel that. That's, yeah. that's fantastic. So let's say a player at home that I have the luxury of a great training aid like this, mm -hmm. 
what would you advise that they would do as a little uh, rehearsal and then maybe drill sequence to get a sensation and a feel of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you heard that ball moving around inside there too. Mm. So that's a timing ball. Okay. So basically once a person has kind of got their grip in the right place, which this really helps them to do because of the angles, get their heel pad on top, trigger finger on the back. Once they get it in the set position, yeah. so they'll go to the top and you, you kind of hear the ball set. Yeah. Once it sets, then I would I just work them quickly through impact. So <clears throat> I feel like impact is important, but the positioning that happens in impact is as a result of you doing the proper movement, right? Because as a player, the last thing I want to be thinking about is the static position of impact. To, in my world, there's no position of impact. We capture it in video, but that you never hold any position. Yeah. So what that would look like is kind of setting it in the backswing and then kind of snapping the balls back through so you can kind of hear it release. So I'll have them set here and then kind of accelerate through to the other side. Yeah. I'll have them do a double snap where they'll get to this side, snap yep. it back, snap it through. <clears throat> and the way the balls work truly um, facilitates that centrifugal force, that extension of energy through the ball. So if somebody, most people, when they grab the saber, uh, it's because they're a big slice through the ball, classic move. Well, watch what happens. If, I've, if I'm here and I come a little bit over the top, lead with the shoulders, lag the hands a little bit too much, the snap is way late. Yeah. So a lot of times the drill for them is here, they get their back to the target, get posted, like mm -hmm. loaded up on the back leg, and then I'll just have them kind of work the hands down yeah. in this position, which inevitably brings the club from the inside. Yeah. But once they've done a couple pump drills, hammer down drill is what I call it, kind of hammering here, once they get to there, then I'll have them go all the way through. And I, I think that's so important. Something you said there, and there's a great quote from, <clears> I believe it's Jack Nicholas. It's like, you want to swing the club through positions, not position the club through the swing. Mm -hmm. And exactly what you're talking about there, if just bringing some awareness that at the moment of impact on Golf Digest and on TV, <laughs> you'll see this image, mm -hmm. right? But there is no single professional golfer out there that's on the 18th hole hitting their second shot in the fourth round under pressure like yourself going, okay, if I just get a little bit more bow in that lead wrist and shift my pressure forward, then yeah, boom, that's going to look really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. It all happens that effect. Well, they might be thinking that on Friday, but then they miss the cut and go home. Correct. The guys Correct. on Sunday are not definitely not thinking <laughs> yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. They watch the first part of this YouTube video without the second part. Yeah. So <laughs> when we're setting up to it, having the intention that, okay, so impact, what we were detailing is having the pressure on the back uh, of that finger on the back side of the shaft that helps that compression, but that is an effect of just moving this club in a well sequenced manner. Mm -hmm. One last thing before we tie a bow on this would really be around what you were saying in regards to the releasing of the energy coming down. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is one of the most misunderstood feels mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. Most players, if you were to say to them, without giving them any context of what we were just discussing, get to the top and feel like you throw the head down, they mm -hmm. would go, well, that's casting, isn't it? Mm. You set your body in such a position where you have room and your hands are relatively in front, that this 0.25 of a second of the top of the swing down to impact, mm -hmm. if you are not letting that club come down and trying to get that force, which we yeah. feel with the back of that index, mm -hmm. essentially you're just doing this number. <laughs> right. Right. Leave it up there, right? Yeah. So we need that club to come back down to the ball, just the same as if you pick up a hammer. When you get to the top of your hammer hit, you're mm -hmm. not thinking about dragging the handle. The intention is the hammer head going down. The sequence then occurs as a result. Right. Right? Yep. So anything you would add in there finally? So let's say that uh, the Sabre is not available for the guys at home, but mm -hmm. they can certainly pick one up. Now, if I'm standing here and I've just got a golf club, it's just that awareness of that trail index finger up against mm -hmm. the, the back of the shaft, you'd say? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you, you have the face on one end and the front, and then you have your trigger finger mm -hmm. on the top end on the back side. So wherever the back of that finger is, it's going to correlate to exactly where the club face is right there. And that's what I do like about this drill. If you take the iron and flip it over like that, yeah. <clears throat> you can kind of hold in your trigger finger the face, oh, wow. and then you just kind of waggle it back and forth, that kind of gives you the feel. So if you came back here and yeah. you came all the way through to square, that's one thing about this saber and the drill is that when you come through, most people when they do this, 
they think they're supposed to spin their hands and roll it over. Because yeah. at some po- at some point, they've had a slice and somebody said, well, you need to roll your hands to fix the slice. They don't understand a, a release is a release of energy Correct. while having the club face stay stable and square through the, the swing. Yeah. So this is an excellent one for people to kind of feel what it feels to load the face this way, release it and release it under this way instead mm-hmm. of like flipping it over. Correct, yeah. We see it's way too much forearm rotation. I think mm-hmm. just a very important note of that is a lot of what we're talking about here happens in an effect mm. of a well-sequenced and positioned golf swing from the top coming down through your intention of swinging towards a target. Mm-hmm. It's not like checkpoint one, algorithm number two, <laughs> let's match it up three. Mm-hmm. You train this, and that's why a training aid such as that, flat side, or just having the awareness of the back of that index finger. And that was amazing. That mm-hmm. reference you gave with the, the club head, mm-hmm. I've never heard that before. Mm-hmm. But now just looking at it, that's even a great little checkpoint for the wrist. Yeah, because right? if you think, like if I put this here and I said, tap this dry, tap this grip with your finger, just go a little tap, 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 like mm. this, go tap, 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 right? That's like you hammering with that knuckle into the, into the club. Yep. So that's the sensation right there. And like you were asking about like the timing and the misconception of like throwing or holding or lagging or releasing and when does all that take place. And that's why this is called the saber because it's named after a sword. Yeah. So I would tell my students like take a sword and go like my dad spent a lot of time in the highlands of Papua New Guinea. Yeah. Like you can imagine him going through with a machete chopping down the bush. Yeah. Well, it, you're not going to guide a machete. You're going to hack your way through the scrub, right? Well, if you have a sword, you're gonna wield it like a sword. If I had an ax and I was gonna chop that tree down, I would be throwing the ax into the tree. The difference here is a lot of people think accuracy is tied to slow. Like the slower you go, the more accurate you'll go. Yeah. But speed is actually what you need. And then the more repetitive and the better quality your speed is, the more accuracy you get. I think most amateurs guide and they hold onto the club and every good athlete, good professional throws that club through there with speed, and then they look to see if it's straight, right? So when you have acceleration, the ball and the turf get in the way of that. As long as you're not guiding it, you're gonna have some accuracy. Yeah. The more you guide it, the more dispersion you get. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So I'm just gonna get the feel here of the index finger matching it up with the club yeah. face. From there, I actually like that whole tap, tap, tap yeah. that you were just talking about. That kind of gets my wrists working in a yeah. really nice feel. Let's clip one down there. Let's hear it and let's look at the uh, sound of compression as we come off. Well, that right there, that came (laughs) off fizzing, right? That was really good. Mate, great stuff. Cheers.